Hello. I'm once again doing a VOD review. Uh, a lot of these are because I haven't been playing that much in recent days. I'm actually working on making a game, which I'll post on this channel soon, just as like a one-off, which is pretty fun. Um, going in terms of yesterday's game, these are some older VODs from when I was trying to learn the strategist line, just so that I can start to implement it uh, into my current gameplay. This one's going to be a bit different. Something that I kind of mentioned a little bit in the previous uh, previous video, if you watched yesterday's video, that kind of goes over Noxus and strategist lines. This one, um, this one's going to be focused on Misfortune Carry, because uh, it's a reroll meta. Everybody goes reroll. Uh, it's miserable. The tempos are insane because everybody just hitting on stage three, and going for four cost carries if you don't have a dedicated reroll comp is sometimes really difficult. But um, depending on what you get, you want to be flexible and play your board. So sometimes like you end up re-rolling even though it's like not really a re-roll comp, if that makes sense. And it's uh, something that you might not cap out really well, but you might uh, be able to uh, compete with the people that you're playing against. And not lose too much health and get some sort of placements based on your opener. So I had a Swain. Already thinking Noxus or Strategist. Uh, usually you want to go Noxus. I hate going Sork, but I do have an Ori, so I could go Sork as well. So we have Noxus. Also, I think um, I fixed my pen. Yesterday, my pen was off, like the screen capture didn't work. So I think now it's actually working, which is really exciting. So you can go Noxus, you can go Sword. And then Strategist is what I like to go. This is probably the most shit out of all the comps. Like this one is shit, right? It's very rarely good. But the thing is, is that these two are almost always contested. So you got to learn how to play with the shit boards so that you don't lose as much elo, right? There's some games where I'm able to play and I can kind of high roll and I can do it. But the thing with strategist is that you can just hit a zero, right? Nobody's going for a zero, right? And that's kind of the that's kind of the vibe that you want to have. Uh for me, it depends on what kind of gamer you are, what kind of gameplay you like to do. Um if you are into um, just like rerolling and forcing and you're okay with losing that way, me, the most frustrating way for me to lose is... Um, also, I hit a Alawi 2, by the way. Right? When you hit a 2-star, you should always just play it for tempo. Right? Because now I have... Like, you just want to win rounds and you want to stay healthy, especially if people are going reroll. I kind of scout a little bit. You, uh, scouting early isn't that great because a lot of people can pivot and switch. So you shouldn't like... You know, it depends on your elo, uh, if people are just going to hard force whatever they hit on, like, round 1-4. But it's good to know for, like, reroll comps, which is what I'm just kind of checking. Because if I'm going Noxus, if nobody has Samira, am I going Samira reroll? Um, some of those lines I was talking about yesterday with the Noxus. Anyways, um, so what was I saying? I think I fixed the pen, everything's good. And for me, personally, the gameplay that I like, um, I absolutely can't stand it when i'm contested and i lose because i'm contested right some people are okay with that but for me it's like i hate hard forcing into a reroll or hard forcing into a i just need this one carry type of team comp because a lot of times somebody else just happens to get that carry and then i just go eighth because i don't hit what i need to hit and that's the way i want to minimize losing the most right i want to be able to play flexible boards um so that i don't have to run into those situations uh this was when i was still using orn uh, I'm contemplating going back to it. I don't know how good it is. It's just, um, I don't know. I feel like I had more fun when I would play with Orn. I'm hoping that, um, like now I kind of play Poro, but I th because I think Poro is just, you have a greater chance of hitting like the really, really good augments that can just win you the game. But I, I, I'm hoping that um, they just nerfed Orn, which is, they nerfed Orn, this was before they nerfed Orn, so that's why I was playing it. Then when they nerfed him, I went to Poro. I'm hoping that in the next patch, some of the item characters become a little bit better. If reroll gets nerfed, I think Orn or Ezreal might be good because for a lot of these multi-carry team comps, you really need the extra items. Uh, okay, so for this stage, I have an Alawi 2 and I slammed my item on her, right? The reason I slammed this on her is because I just have way more frontline and I'm just like, uh-oh, all frontline, right? I'm just trying to streak, right? Uh, I don't have Noxus in, which is a bit annoying, but I haven't hit a third Noxus, right? Um, if I had Noxus in, this would be really great to just streak it out, but um, I don't. So I'm trying my best to streak here. I want to streak because I already have a strong board and I have a lot of econ. I'm in a very powerful position, right? Streaking 
here like i don't really care about the items in particular because i'm i'm gonna be uh I already have a good Orn item, and I'm just going to be playing towards kind of flexible. Whatever I get, I get, right? Right now, currently, my board is just two Bastion, two Sork, right? I'm not committed to Noxus. I'm not committed to Sork. I'm not committed to Strategist. Um, I can play anything, really. So, so I'm not, like, hard forcing that I need to find a particular item. I just want to Econ up and win streak into Krugs, hopefully. I think I end up win streaking into Krugs this game. Uh, let's just skip a little bit ahead. Yeah, so I win streak into Krugs, so I, I feel like I'm in a good spot. Uh, this Alawi unit, I don't know, it's kind of slept on. I feel like early game, Alawi, as well as Bilgewater, I don't know if Bilgewater in, but just having like Bastion, like early game, and having a, a Bastion 2-star, uh, it really helps a lot of times. Like, even though I'm not committed Bastion, I'm not committing to anything. I could also go Nico reroll, but this was before I knew the Nico line, right? There's a Tarek here. Uh, I should have maybe... Like, you know, th this is an option for maybe playing that. I end up finding a Misfortune, so I put in Strategist, right? Uh, st strategist isn't, like, the be-all, end-all. It doesn't give that many stats. It's been nerfed a couple times, right, since set 9. Uh, before, it used to be, like, Lux Azir all the time. Now you can play Silco Azir. You can just play Shurima Azir. You can play um, Azir Noxus. You can, like, there's a lot of... You kind of just throw it into another board, and it's great because it's uncontested. We're in Finn's Market, so I'm gaining some stat items, or some tank items. So, I basically have all frontline item here. So this is good, so now I can focus, I should be focusing these on making carry items. I don't. I think I make that mistake, but I have a Zizzerot, and I have uh, the Hullbreaker, which is good for frontline. Uh, with the Zizzerot especially, this makes Sorks a lot better, right? The biggest problem with Sork is like items right because you need like frontline and you need backline items so if you make like all your carry items then then your frontline is going to be bad and then if you make all your frontline items your backline is going to be bad so it becomes like this balancing act that makes it really hard uh if you can tempo and get to eight then you're fine or if you have an emblem that's fine but a lot of times you just struggle to have like sufficient items for frontline backline uh here's where i make my first mistake that i would say I was just talking about how I have good frontline items and maybe I should prioritize backline items. Um, I end up just like making frontline items here, right? Look, I'm just like slamming this. I was grabbing this and this to make another frontline item. I think this was just me being like a little bit out of it, right? Like I think this is like when you're not focused and you're just kind of playing the game. Sometimes you run into these situations where you're just being stupid or making bad decisions. But yeah, I should prioritize some other items. Just because like, Zizzerot is really good. And these support items, I didn't gain like attacking support items, right? Like I could have gained like, um, you know, there, there's what's it called? There's like, um, all the ones that give attacks, but I forget the names of them. The the Zeke's Herald, you know, those things. Uh, Kakon, right? Okay, so here I grabbed this, right? So I looked at my items, I grabbed Shiv. I grab Shiv because I need Shred, right? If I'm going Sork, if I'm going Strat, slash Azir, or if I'm going, um, what's the last one? Uh, Noxus. Noxus, a little bit less, but if you look at my board, I don't have, there's no Samira, right? No Samira. So what I'm kind of leaning towards is either Sork, but I hate Sork. That's a me personal problem. Every time I play Sork, I lose. I'm very bad at playing it, um, and I need to learn that. So maybe if I played a bit more and just lost a bit more, I'd learn. But I'm kind of leaning towards Strategist Azir. This is good because it gives me Shred, and it's a good Azir item, right? This is great to put on Azir. So that's, what, that's my thought process here of grabbing Shiv. Uh, if you look, I also am no items towards, um, like, the other Shred, right? So here, like, I don't have Spark, right? If you have Spark, you don't, you can do one or the other, but I don't have it, so I grab this for Shred. I slam Guardbreaker, and I'm looking for a mana item, right? The reason I'm looking for a mana item is because Misfortune could hold mana, right? She does really well with a mana item. You want blue buff, though, right? Shoujin is a lot worse. This is really bad, right? This is a big X. X, 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 really bad. But the problem is, 
I want to slam items because I want to keep my streak, right? If we look here, I'm 50 gold and I'm 6 streaking, right? So I want to stay rich, right? Now I'm 50 gold. Right? Did this item make the difference? I don't know. It might have. I probably should have scouted to make sure and see if I greed the item. But it's a mana item all the same, so it's not the end of the world, right? You want mana items so she can cast, right? And the thing is, you can take these mana items and you can put them on Silco. And you can put them on Ari, right? Because when you're playing uh, Azir, when you're playing like um, Strategist Azir, usually you're putting in a Sork, right? You just have like a Sork here, and that's either like you high roll Ari. Or you put Silco, right? So those are your options. So basically what I'm doing is I'm slamming items, putting them on units that are on my board that I might sell later, that I could eventually put on the actual units, right? And then I have my front line items kind of set up. I have this extra, um, like I think back, what time is it so I can see? 13 minutes. Like if I go all the way back, I wonder what my, my other Orn item, I think my other Orn item was a non-mana item when I popped it. I think in modern day, I would have just taken Riftwalk, right? I also want you to know, you should take Riftwalk here. Riftwalk is really strong, and I already have a Lowy 2-star, right? So I have a Bastion frontline, and I had Riftwalk, right? And then my items were not that bad for Kassadin. Just saying, like, um, it's a free win if you have an opener for it. Uh, a lot of these, like... Giga unit augments are free wins if you have them. Okay, I just want to see. Okay, so here's... So this is what I did. This was to be flexible. I took Trickster's Glass. It's been nerfed a bunch. So it's not that great. Trickster's Glass is really good with some units. Like, it's good with Samira. Because I don't know if I was going Samira. It's good with... um, Like, units that have abilities that stack, right? But Sniper's Focus, this is good for Ari. This is good for Azir. This is also good for MF. Right, if I end up going MF. So there's, I think this one would have been the better option. Because this one, it's like, it's kind of weird. Right? It's kind of weird who you want to put it on. You can put it on pretty much anybody. Um, the only difference is that Trickster's Glass can be frontline. And I think that was my logic, right? I was saying, like, if I go Sork, I want it as a frontline item. Because, but even so, Sork, this was already fucks, right? So I think this was the better choice. Which was also a mistake. I just want to point it out because I didn't point it out before. Um, I think it's better just to take Sniper's Focus there. Uh, upon VOD review. I watched this like, I skimmed this before doing this little video. But I also have like a, in my head a couple notes. I ran to this Piltover guy. This is another reason. <clears throat> another reason to stay healthy. So here I'm 100 streaking and I have 60 gold. Right? Uh, I might only be playing for a second because of this Piltover guy. Look at this shit. He's 50 gold. He's not that weak. There are other people that are garbage. Look at these people in this lobby. He's gonna cash out and he's gonna have a giga cash out, right? He's not gonna have like some little baby bitch cash out. He's gonna cash out at like 30 or 40. Um, I struggle with Piltover. These people, every time they cash out, they fucking hit. So, you know, we gotta be careful. Uh, that's why it's important to stay healthy. Just stay ahead of the game, right? There's not many rerollers in this lobby, which is good for me. But there is this guy contesting Noxus, which I did scout. I think I scouted, I skipped over when I scouted it, which is why I'm more committed when I committed to Strategist was because I saw that there was the Noxus guy. Oh, I remember. There's a point where I got tilted. Like the guy had um, Mordekaiser. Like, look, see right here. This is where I saw it. This is where I committed to um, Azir. Because this guy has Mordekaiser on stage 2-6 with a Noxus. And this, it's like, what the fuck am I playing against, right? Anyways. So, you know, sometimes that happens, right? So, you know, I'm like, well, I guess I'm not playing that. Um, okay, then what do I end up taking as my augment on 4 or 2? Oh, here, because I was super rich, so I, after uh, uh, right before wolves, I roll a little bit. And then after wolves, I send it. Right? So, on my send down, we can watch my roll down. So, I'm kind of thinking about units. Um, I can grab Cassiopeia, and then I think I, I'm thinking like, is it better to play more than somebody else? I go to 30, uh, I go to 40 here, I think. Uh, the reason I'm rolling, uh, a lot of times, like, it's bad to roll on 7, and it's bad to roll before, um, like, on Wolves, right? It's bad to kind of roll, because you'll lose Econ, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, right? Something like that. Uh, the problem is, is that, like, some of the lobby is contested. If I can still hit the Noxus, then I can play Noxus, and if I don't, I don't. 
but it's kind of okay because I'm super rich and I 10 streaked, right? I'm 100 health, so I want to aggressively use my money because I have a lot of health to deal with. Also, everybody, you can see everybody's sending it, right? Look at all the three stars up here. Look at that, everybody's fucking sending it. So I have to send it too. Uh, I didn't send it to zero. Uh, I should have, right? I think I'm greeting because I have a lot of health, right? I'm thinking like, oh, I can just wait till the augment and then decide what I'm going to do. But then look, I'm sending it late, right? See, I, this, is, this is what I mean by I'm a bit bad sometimes. And this is what kind of holds me back in diamond. Um... I sent it after. I have this guy on bench, I have this guy on bench, I have this guy on bench, right? And I'm probably going to lose this match. Oh no, I win this one anyway. So I, I wasn't punished, but if I'm going to roll it down, I should just, like, I, there's one or the other decision, right? You either roll it down before or you roll it down after. Anyways, on my roll down, I want you to note, this is where you play MF reroll. MF reroll isn't that great. It's not that strong, right? The reason I'm playing MF Reroll, also, let's see what I think. Scope weapons go with Mordekaiser, but I'm not confident that I can hit Mordekaiser, so I don't hit it. Uh, so I don't take it. This one's, like, kind of bait. This is kind of bait, but I might have been baited into it. I think I just take Unified. I think Unified is just better here. Yeah, Unified is just better there. I think if you look up the stats, I looked it up after, and then Unified is better. Um, okay, let me... Um, so, now I slot in my Azir, which is a turn late, right? So this is bad. But then also... I want you guys to note the situation, which is going to be part of the content of this video. I'm kind of using it as like a VOD review and talking strategists in general. So it's not like a be all end all, but this is the hard truth of it. You can't just decide that you're going to go MF reroll off rip. You can't be like, oh, this is an MF game, right? Because I only had two MFs, right? Two MFs is dog shit. That's nothing, right? I still have an Alawi on my board. This is nothing, right? I don't have a Nasus. I don't have anything. I have a Jarvan one. I have this guy just here for fun. He's Juggernaut. Right? And despite the memes, MF doesn't count as two jug. Uh, but anyways, I digress. If you look, I'm only two off, right? I'm only two off, right? I just need one, two, and then boom, I'm three star MF, right? So now what I'm thinking is Trickster's Glass, MF Carry. It sucks that I have Shojin instead of Blue Buff, but if you look at my items, it was the right decision. I also have a Shitter Nico. So Shitter Nico with this, right? Easy clap. I don't know when I got, got dropped the Nico. I might have got dropped early, but you shouldn't like play around. You shouldn't like force it based on that. Yeah, I got it dropped early. But anyways, uh, I'm like one MF. I'm two MFs off, right? So at this point, it's like, okay, now I'm sending it for MF, right? Uh, because I'm playing MF carry, I use this. I can put in this guy for Jug instead, uh, which I was too slow because I'm bad at the game. And I have a Heimer, and I can go Azir. And then I have MF2 with these things. I think the MF stacks, like her her damage, like one of them reduces damage and the other one casts. So it's good to put them next to each other. I don't think you want to spread them out. Um, but I have to look that up. I'm not exact, I'm not entirely sure about positioning here. But I think it's good to put them together and just make sure they try and kill a unit. And I have Shred, right? Another thing that I should do is MF is doing damage and this is Shred. You should actually just put them next to each other, right? You want the shred to shred the same units as this. I'm spreading out my carries because I'm scared of Jarvins. If nobody has Jarvin, you should put your carries next to each other. Uh, in this case, because I have shred and then I also have shred. My items aren't great on MF, which I think is what's going to hold me back and make sure that I don't top one this game. Also, I hit Azir's naturally. Look, this guy just also natural a bunch of Azir's, which is really unfortunate. Because this guy's also the guy that's like contesting my comp in general. Because he was the one that was going Noxus with the Mordekaiser. And he just hits Noxus thing. But then he also has an Azir. It's like, what the fuck? Anyways. Um, so yeah. The only reason I go MF uh, carry is... Like these MF items, I was probably going to put on like a Silk or an Ari. But I just hit MF3. So I just shoved it on her. And then I gave her the Orn item because I just wanted extra AP. Right? Um, but in general, my board's kind of shit. I finally hit a Nasus at one point, but you know, it's not the best in the world. And I think it's Finn's Market, so I think we're going to get dropped an Orn item eventually, or some sort of support item. Uh, but anyways, I'm thinking about going 9, or going 8, and rolling for like a Sork, right? Getting an Aryan, because I already have 4 Strategists, so you know, I'm kind of capped in that way. Uh, but I'm doing pretty well. I'm still high health, but there's a lot of people that are starting to beat me because I'm kind of capped, right? Uh, in this spot, 
I have two options. I'm either rolling for these guys upgraded, or or I'm uh, sending it to eight. Right. My decision was to go eight. The reason I wanted to go eight was because I don't. These guys don't have items, and in my head, I'm like, are they really doing that much? The reality is, a nasus two is a nasus two, and it's probably gonna help me save a lot of health by just having the more front line. Uh, the way this comp really works. This comp is like a lot of moving pieces, right? It's basically strategist, but instead of having like my items on like a good unit, I have them on MF, right? This guy's high roll challengers. I just got dicked. He has like gifts from the fallen and Hodge item and this thing is like, come on, right? So uh, this is a really tempo comp, right? You want to, um, I was having enough money to roll on eight. So I just go eight to roll on eight. Uh, but I want to play this Heimer. I want to get an Asus 2, which I have. You really want frontline, and you really want strong backline. And you want everything to be well. Also, this Jarvan position, I didn't notice. He should be up here. He gains plus unified, right? Which I haven't been using. But anyways, so we got um, Heimer in. Uh, I can maybe roll for upgrade, but I think I'm just going to save Econ this round. But I'm kind of greeting a lot, right? In the early game, I felt like I played the early game really well. I felt like I identified my win con with the misfortune. But I think late game here, I need to stabilize by just like, you know, I should have rolled earlier to stabilize, to be honest. But I need like more damage, right? My MF items aren't that great. I have all these removers though, right? Because it's Finn's market, so I should have considered like removing something and fixing MF items. But I think I just didn't hit anything, right? Like this whole game, I didn't hit tiers for blue buffs. And then on Carousel, because I was high health, I'm last pick, so I don't have like the cream of the crop to pick the blue buffs. So it kind of sucks, right? And you look here, no blue buff again. It's like, eh. right? And with this board, you can maybe slot in Bilgewater. Right, like putting in like somebody instead of Nasus, like for putting in like instead of this guy, um, for Noxus, it's probably better to put in somebody for Bilgewater, but then I need one more for Bilgewater. I don't have a gangplank, so it's kinda hard to slot in Bilgewater in this comp unless you have like a plus one somewhere. Uh okay, I removed these items. I think I'm gonna shuffle items around a little bit. But I'm fixing a zero item. Ooh, that's kinda bad. Okay, I shuffled those items really poorly. What I think I should have done is I should have put, um, I should have swapped these items with, mm, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say, but I think also this game, this was just a bad game that I wasn't thinking straight. We haven't really run into any Jarvins or CCs, so I should have put these guys together. Also, this is the Piltover guy, so you know, this is what I mean by, I, I think I was probably just feeling disheartened, and my mental was bad just because, like, you know, I've been losing a lot. But uh, I think just seeing the 40 charge Piltover like early on when I was scouting, I was just upset that like I wasn't going to win anyway. So I'm just kind of playing for top four instead of playing for top one, which is fine. Sometimes you can't play for top one and you shouldn't throw your game to try and get a top one. But I definitely could have squeezed out a couple positions here. Um, I think we can skip to end game. Spoiler, I didn't go first, but I think I go third, but I could have gone second. The problem is going second was really hard this lobby. So... This is the, uh, is this the Piltover guy? I can't remember. No, this is the, the rogue guy. So also, chat, this is a learning lesson for anybody who's watched this far into the video. Also, if you did, thank you. Uh, when you're playing against rogues, right? There is a special position. So what you want to do is you want to put units here. And then you don't want to put unit here and unit here. You want to put your carry right here in this little corner, right? This corner is the giga corner of doom. I don't know how to like make it like you put them here, right? Because what's going to happen is uh, your the rogues. Oh, I should make that a little bit thicker. The rogue uh, like this and this i'm panicking sorry so the ro oh, which color was it it's blue yeah so the rogues what they're gonna oh my god i'm so bad at this okay <laughs> you're the rogues what they're gonna do is they're gonna proc and they're gonna dash here right and this guy he's gonna dash here they don't dash here 
if there's a guy here though, this guy could dash here, right? The only safe spot is here, right? This is safe. Because what happens is the way they're out, their AI works is that they prioritize backline, right? But then if you have this, it's like not backline. And here, not backline. But this only works if you have more than one, right? You need like many. Right, because what's gonna happen is he's this guy's gonna dash. Uh, let me fix this up. So what's gonna happen is this guy dashes. He goes here, kills this, kills this, and then he goes here, kills this. Right. Instead, if there's n if you have like a bunch here, what's gonna happen is he's just gonna get stuck killing these, and this guy will live for a lot longer. That's rogue positioning. You wanna so to reiterate, you wanna put one here. Or in the worst case, you want to put one here, and then you want to put here, 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 like that. Preferably two, like two away from your carry is also really good. So like here, 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 for example. And you want these guys backline so that it prioritizes those ones. Uh, I didn't do this because this was actually before I learned about this. Like I said, this was, I think this was like a patch ago, right? This was the patch that Azir was still not that great. It was the one where rogues were really good. There was like no nerfs and Azir hadn't been buffed yet. Because an older video. This was back when I was learning strategists. And that's why I'm like speaking with a bit of hindsight. Oh, I went fourth. Wow, look how bad I am, chat. Oh, do I go third? I think I go third, actually. So this guy who's rogue is right here. So this is the rogue guy. And this is the Piltover guy, right? So this one is a hard. And this one's impossible. So I could have gone, so like best is second with perfect play. And me, I got third because of my mistakes. Does it matter that much? Not really, because a third and a second, a third is still a third. The problem is you gain like piss elo. Like, I don't know what happened, but I think I'm, I, I lost too many games when I was trying to learn how to play the game. And now they think that I'm like really low plat elo. Because every time I win, I get, like, 10 points. Like, I got, like, second, and I'll get, like, less than 20. Oh, I got promoted to D3. This was back in the good old days. I think this was when I first hit D2. Like, I just one streak everything after this game. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, so what's the takeaway from this? You should never, uh, you should never, like, hard force into strategist comp. Because even with the buff, strategist is kind of hard to cap out right your main cap outs you didn't see it this game but like when you're here it's like you need legendary units to compete because everybody in the real meta is gonna have like their three cost carries or they're gonna have like the really broken four cost like if you're playing against vanquishers that this standard like frontline backline style comp isn't really gonna do much even if you have a misfortune three she's not as busted in terms of synergies as some of the other uh one star carries or three star carries like this board gets cleared by cho this board gets cleared by rogues if they have like a really good rogue board uh this gets cleared by piltover gets cleared by uh ionia vanquisher it gets cleared by a lot right it gets cleared by scope weapons mordekaiser it's kind of just like a fallback board where you can try and maximize because nobody else is going it and i didn't play the board super well i'm just kind of playing what i hit because on my roll down i spent a lot of gold on mf uh, not a lot of gold on MF, but I spent gold obviously holding on to MFs and rolling for and um, keeping them as I rolled for them. But you shouldn't really force this, right? Uh, it's not a comp to force, it's a comp to play if you hit it. And if I had good MF items uh, and I could have streaked to go 9, um, if I go 9 here, then you can slot in Gangplank, you can have 3 Bilgewater, you can slot in Ari, you can have uh, 2 Sork with Ari, you can slot in Ionia Bastion if you play um, Shen and then... Uh, Tarek, right? And you can play a, basically that board. And that would be like your max cap out board with uh, two legendary units, right? Uh, if you don't play the Bilgewater because you just disavow the MF, then instead you play like some frontline unit like Scion or Aatrox depending on your synergies, right? Uh, but usually it's like whatever you two star you play. Uh, or you can play Cassante with Bastion synergy if you can play four Bastion frontline if you end up with those units, right?
And you can drop one strategist, right? You can probably drop the jar and you drop something else. Anyways, uh, hopefully this was informative. I think I went over time again because I just kind of ramble. But um, hopefully this was informative and it was a good VOD review. And I'll try and like make it a bit uh, more condensed in the future. Uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.